In this technological age, we have access to pornographic material a lot easier than we did, say, 20 or 30 years ago. Once upon a time, it used to be that you used to sneak into your dad's cupboard and maybe find a magazine. Then it progressed to videotapes. And now it's actually on our phones and it's easily accessible. Porn addiction and masturbation addiction has become a very highly um, addictive nature now. And a lot of children are starting off their journey at 13 or 14. On today's show, we're going to be speaking to someone who's been through the process and he's going to tell us how he went through it and how he came out the other end. Hi, this is Joey Buzzertal and welcome to the Secret Men's Business Podcast. On today's show, we're going to be speaking to Roman Moronoff and he's going to be talking about his porn and masturbation addiction. And more importantly, how he turned it around to actually probably learn more about himself and become a better man. Roman, good morning. How are you? Hi, Joey. I am so excited about our conversation. It's an honor to be with you today. I'm I'm excited too because really, it's funny. I've been doing all these podcasts on mental health on men's issues. And to be honest, not a lot of people would actually put their hand up and actually say, can I come and talk about this topic? So... I've been wanting to meet someone for a long time, and it's been so good that we crossed paths. So before we start, do you want to tell our audience a little bit about yourself, maybe a bit about your background, uh, maybe where you're from and, and so on? Sure. Now I, I'm 38, almost 39. I live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and I moved here two years ago from Russia, where I had lived for, what, 36 years. So uh, that. That always been my dream to move to North America and finally I'm here. Pretty happy about it. And professionally, I'm a coach. I had been a translator for 14 years. And after moving to Canada, I switched to coaching because this is my passion. I'm a huge fan of self-improvement. And one of the things that I help people do as a coach, and probably my most important specialization is helping them conquer porn addiction and masturbation addiction. Yeah, well, firstly, uh, it's exciting because Melbourne, where I'm from, I think we have a sister um, a sister sort of relationship with Toronto, so that's pretty exciting. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about how, how did you know? Because the thing is, is that there's a fine line between watching it, because, I mean, you know, a lot of people watch it versus when you know that there's a problem. Like, what was the time or what was the moment that you realized that you had an addiction or it was a problem for you? Well, one of the aha moments for me was the fact that I I was about 16 years old and I was so shy. I was so shy, you know, just by my nature. And then also porn actually exacerbated this shyness. And I could not talk to girls and I oftentimes did not did not talk to strangers. So it was difficult and I realized that porn is taking taking away my ability to actually be able to connect with people because it was easier for me to sit alone in the room compared to talking to a girl. So did you so are you saying that you knew back then that it was like at sixteen was it already highlighting a an impact on your life at that young age? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it had really a profound effect on me for the next five years because from 16 to 21, you know, those golden teenage years, I did not date. I did not have a girlfriend. I was salivating over women, over girls. I fell in love all the time. But I I didn't do anything instead of instead of actually taking action. Yeah. I instead of taking action and like going up to a girl that I like, I would you know, stay at home watch porn. Yeah. So uh, look, I mean, uh, you don't need to go into a lot of detail, but I'm I'm curious because I'm a therapist and I hear a lot of this stuff with my clients that have this this addiction. But um, the interesting thing that I find that is the time frame. So, rough, like, are we talking about hours upon hours? I would say that. I would span from probably from 15 minutes when I had access to porn to about one hour when I did not have access. So I had to sort of go go get my VHS tape or 
go get download the images from the internet onto a floppy disk and then bring them home and then you know lock myself in a room and masturbate so it would yeah. depend on, on the accessibility and did you find that it was um like you really mentioned that it was impacting you in regards to dating and being a teenager and so and then you became an adult and you know as an adult i guess we have more responsibilities and so how did it impact your day-to-day life in regards to you know that need and again i want to highlight for our listeners because you know i I want people to know that there is probably a healthy version of masturbation and then there's the version when it comes to addiction so for you what was that tip over like how did it impact your day-to-day life in regards to your need versus your everyday life well when i was married already i got myself into mild depression and at that point, my addiction got very, very serious. So I was masturbating a lot, and it actually took away time and energy away from my life. And she felt it, and I felt it. But I just, I wasn't connecting with her at the deep emotional level. Because all of my life energy, all of my vitality went into court. Yeah. And I, 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 real, I, I was really... It was killing my libido, I guess. Well, it's sort of like in a way it was becoming your go-to. I mean, you were married, you know, you had a relationship, so you had access to intimacy. Um, like, I, I think you may know the answer to this now that you're on the other end, but what do you think you liked about it? Why did you choose that over, like, say, the real connection? Or, you know, what? why do you think your mind didn't say to you, what are you doing? I think that... When that happened, and I was, I was 25. Yeah, I was 25 at that point. I think I simply re-triggered old patterns mm. that were still in my brain, and I, I succumbed to them. I went back to them because I knew that was an escape mechanism that worked very well in the moment. Mm. So I remember that I could escape that feeling of depression very quickly with work. So that's why I went for it. You know, it, the problem with porn, the main problem is that it's, it's too easy to get that pleasure. Like you, you push the button and the, it's immediately there. It's even easier than food, as I believe, because with food you need to go to a store, you probably need to cook it. So it, it, it takes some effort, right? With porn, there's no effort. You just mm. plop your phone, there you go. Yeah, I was going to say, like, nowadays it's just accessible. Like, I mean, I've heard stories of people doing it on the bus on their way to work and, you know, it's just accessible all the time, which is the problem. I mean, like you were mentioning before that when you were 15, 16, that you couldn't go out on dates and so on. And it's interesting how the, you know, the computer becomes or the phone becomes like a realistic element in your life. You think, you know, like when you look back at the porn you were watching and the things you were seeing and the things that you were trying to comprehend at a young age and then as you grew up, what were some of the things that you believed that were true? You know, like I know that porn nowadays has become more aggressive, it's become more violent. Um, For you as as a young teenager, what were some of the things that you thought were true when it came to intimacy and sex? I had no clue really. I really thought that what porn showed was all there is. And so when I when I started dating at 21, it was really a revelation because real sex is so <laughs> porn cannot compare to real sex because yeah. the emotional component and what I call the spiritual the spiritual component of sex is is unbelievably bigger. It's mm. it's it's something when you're in love, when you love the person, when you want to give love to them, and really, really, really like nurture the relationship and cherish it in the moment. That's that's a totally different experience, like yeah. out of the world experience. Did you so so that's sort of interesting. So you didn't actually um go out there and try and seek um the, to replicate what you were seeing? <sighs> have you had clients maybe that have 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 brought that to you? You know if I understand you correctly, you're, you're saying that people watch porn and then they 
go and want to replicate that in their life. Yeah. I mean, the clients that I see uh, that are young, what you know, they have the same experience as you, but when they went out and lost their virginity, they believed that sex was, was like what they saw. And so the interesting thing was they tried to replicate it. And what they end up experiencing in most cases was a, an erectile dysfunction, right? Because when they actually got to do it, they they were expecting it to be like they they watched and their their penis couldn't work with them. So I'm just wondering if you've had any of experiences like that or have you heard of any experiences like that with some of your clients? Yeah, I have actually had this sort of experience myself with my wife where I pushed I pushed her to do some of those things that I was seeing in porn. And actually I I pushed her to watch porn. So okay. they, like that was and I'm helping make overall. Yeah, and for, for example, one of my clients, he 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 has had this, you know, feet fetish. So he likes that kind of porn, and that's exactly what he looks for in real life. Mm. It looks like a feet, and that's what arouses them. Mm. So how do you how do you explain to yourself and then to I guess your customers, what healthy, because look, I'm not against porn and I know that there are some people that I guess talk about abstaining, but what's your interpretation of healthy sex with, that may involve watching some porn or versus unhealthy sex watching porn? Oh, there is a study, a very good one, which actually breaks people, users of porn into three categories. Mm -hmm. The biggest one is just recreational users of porn. And it's about 70%. So this is, yeah, this is pretty healthy, pretty normal. And the, my definition is that whether you are, you are not addicted to porn to the degree that you're able to control your urge to watch it. So if you are in charge of watching porn and not, and porn is not in charge of you, then you're a recreation. The second category is those people who are non-compulsive users, but they guilt themselves. And usually those people are, oftentimes, are people who have very strong religious beliefs like Catholic and porn goes against those beliefs. So they, they do watch porn, but then they blame yeah, themselves. There's like and shame the shame involved, yeah. Exactly. And the final category is, is probably the is the most problematic one because it includes people who are compulsive users and they also shame themselves. So they realize that they have this problem. Mm. But they can they simply cannot control themselves at all. So these are probably I don't like the word porn addict because I don't yeah. like to think of I don't, I don't, like yeah, the word addict. addict can be a little bit I mean I like to sort of I like to call it um if it's either sex addiction or porn addiction or um masturbation it's really intimacy deficiency disorder in a way that they're they're avoiding something so um you mentioned some of the re things that you were avoiding you had depression and so on what are some of the other reasons that you've heard of why why guys or even women get so into or attached to their porn as a way to escape yeah i usually think of three reasons pretty simple unhappiness boredom and loneliness mm. Okay. And is there what, like, I guess run us through, because I know from, uh, we run a, a, a Facebook group and we have a, a YouTube channel. So we have a lot of dialogue and I know a lot of guys have brought up this subject. So what would be the, how would you handle the triggers or, you know, what's the, what are some of the steps to start to turn this around? <laughs> well, you know, from the practical standpoint, from the practical standpoint. It's best to actually work on your relationship. Oh, well, no, let's look at this more broadly. Well, I guess that's, you can look at that if they're in a relationship. And I guess we need to look at the fact if someone's single. Yeah, like, you know, absolutely. both ways. Yeah. Let's take a deeper perspective, a broader perspective. I call this a new project. So whenever, whenever a person starts working with me as a coach to conquer this addiction, I tell them that you need to focus on a lot of your energy, especially the energy that you're now conserving by not watching porn and masturbating. You need to rechannel that energy on a new endeavor. And it should be pretty big. Like 
picking picking a new hobby, like changing a job or starting a new relationship or taking massive action with your existing relationship. And so the, there are two components of it. First of all, you rechannel that energy because otherwise it will just, you know, it keeps it throwing out. Exactly, exactly. And the second thing is that it's key for us to focus because where whatever we focus on, our energy goes there, our thoughts go there. So there is a really little headspace left to think for when you focus on something as, as big yeah. as any project. Mm. I mean, it's, it sounds to me that what you're saying is what you said earlier, and that is, I'm a strong believer that everything that we do in life really comes back to how we love ourselves. So if someone's spending, um, I had a client once who spent 36 to 48 hours without drinking or eating, just watching porn and masturbating. Like it's, oh I, my, I know it was too whole. It was, and it was actually linked to what you were saying earlier. It was, um, a guy that was religious and his wife and his children left. Oh. They went away for the weekend. And so as soon as they drove away, he literally stripped down and just went crazy. And um, he realized it was the rock bottom for him when his penis was bleeding. So, what? You know, yeah. From it, and again, you know, it's about exploring what are you doing, you know. And it, 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 there's, I think men have a lot of reasons why they do what they do. Um, I think this sort of behavior is is sort of is a big distraction because a lot of guys may think that it's okay because there's pleasure involved, right? They think, oh, well, it's okay, I've got it under control. But then, you know, it becomes 48 hours or it becomes a day or you don't go to work or whatever. So, you know, we live in a temptation world. So how do you navigate uh, that temptation? How do you navigate that those triggers? Do you need to sort of get a support like a coach like yourself or do you think someone can do that alone? Well, I did it alone. Yeah. <laughs> I did not have a clue that I could reach out for support. So it's totally doable, but it depends on your level of discipline. Mm. I am I am blessed to be quite a disciplined person. So it's easier for me to be disciplined rather than not. So as soon as I understood that this was a problem, I was you able to crush it. it. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask you though, like do you believe that this the porn addiction was linked to the separation of your marriage? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It, it definitely had influence on So was that like family. an aha moment for you, or did it still continue, and then later on you had that moment? Well, chronologically, chronologically, I was I divorced in 2013, and and after that, after that, I made the decision to go for it. It wasn't. It wasn't directly related to my divorce. No. Yeah. And no, but way, there it, was there was there was obviously like you said, you got her to watch it, and so it must have started to grow into something else. Yeah, and in, what I like about porn is that it, it's complete selfishness. So when you do it, it means you're selfish, and when you're selfish in a relationship, that's that means it's going nowhere because. Relationships are about being selfless and giving love and being mm. loving unconditionally. Mm. That's, that's the point. Yeah. Did you find um, another thing I'm curious about is the myth that some people say that if you start and you get addicted, that you end up starting to search and seek alternatives because you get desensitized. Do you find that to be true? Did you keep looking and finding that you were looking at things that you may not have looked at a year ago or a year before? Um, yeah, you, first of all, you're absolutely right. Frequency and intensity of watching porn, they go up usually with people. For me, I would say, yeah, probably a little bit, not, not into violent stuff or like very intense stuff, but definitely my intensity is great. And I, yeah. I think it's, it's normal because people, people do that, but it just exacerbates the problem. Yeah, and I don't think you have an option anyway. I think those sites are designed, I think they're designed by algorithms for you to click, and every time you click, they show you more things. And so the rabbit hole is introduced to you by itself. Um, I, look, I, don't, I could be wrong in this, but I have this feeling that a lot of the times this sort of behavior is normalized by men, right? So, you know, really, we tell, you know, here we are telling men 
about addiction, but really we're also saying, hey, be careful not to, you know, disconnect from yourself, not to disconnect from your relationship. How do we verbalise or communicate to men about this? Because it could easily be brushed under the carpet because it's, you know, porn and, you know, it's okay to watch porn. What would be your advice in regards to don't, about not tricking yourself to think that you don't have a problem? Well, I, I would recommend just off the top of my head, just to simply raise your awareness about this. Listen to people who talk about this on YouTube. And I, I like Reddit because in Reddit, we, we have pretty good forums, including Porn Free and NoFap. These are, these can be eye opening, especially if you start feeling that this might turn into an addiction. Yeah. This, and yeah you, this is the key distinction. Yeah. yeah, and I was going to say, do you think it's important for parents to also start talking to their teenage sons at an early stage to make them understand? Because, you know, I think I realized I saw something the other day which really blew my head away, and that is, you know, these that people that make porn online, they actually started now tagging Disney characters or really really well-known children, teenage, you know, characters. And so when the teenagers, you know, type in the, um, the character's name, it actually takes them to a porn site. So even though there's things that are restricting and there's blocks and all that, it's still going to be, there's still a way to get around it. So how, do, how can parents help young boys learn about all of this, you think? What should they do? Well, they should have the conversation, first of all. Yeah, you definitely sit down with your kid and talk about it. That that's for sure. And and probably ten, eleven, or twelve years old is is the time to do that because at, at this time they, especially now, they get access to all this stuff as as a national business. And I I talk I talk about this to my son who is eleven years old quite often. Well, because he he watches my videos about this. Yeah. So uh, and. It's not, it's not easy. It's not easy, no. but it's definitely worth it because I, I, you know, I realized that this was a problem maybe when I was about 23 or 24 years old because no one, no one told me. I did, I, I just didn't know. So simply say, simply say to your kid that, dude, this is a problem. This mm. is dangerous. Mm. This, this is not healthy. Yeah. And I, I think also it's important because when you were doing it, we weren't in the age of, you know, I think the smartphone has changed the world, right? So we were in a different age. I mean, you, you, I mean, I wanted to giggle when you mentioned the floppy disk. I'm thinking that is a long time ago, <laughs> you know, but the thing is, is that I think that parents get, get, they get delusional thinking that they, their son isn't doing it, but of course they're doing it. I think, you know, if they've got, if someone's got a phone at school, and they've got access, then there's some sort of access to seeing it. So it's, I know it's uncomfortable, but it's important to explain what's going on because there is a myth where people think that if we, they talk about it, it's going to get their kids to do it. But, I mean, I guess you're the same. I'm a strong believer in education. Information is really uh, strong and important because when children don't know something, what do they do? They go looking for the answer. You know, right. so... Um, one final question is, what, what are some of the main things that you think you learned about yourself? Like, you know, you went through this journey, you're now a coach, you know, at this end. What, what are the things that you think you really learned about yourself by going through what you went through? Or, as I, as I mentioned, it's all about selfishness, and I don't want to be selfish. Okay. I really want to be selfish for this. Selfishness is ego, is the lower self, and I want to move to my higher self as I mature as a man. So that's important. Do you ever get triggered or curious, or do you feel that you're that day, that part of your life's over? I I do get triggered, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, so I, I'm guessing you've chosen not to like. It, I know this is a personal question, but I'm guessing that you've chosen. To not look at it, not to use it anymore completely, or do you feel that there is a space for you after what you've been through to have it in your life? For me, no. Okay. Definitely no. And 
one good reason is that I took on this commitment in front of my followers on social media. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess, you know, you've been through all of this and now you've got a, a family and you've, you know, you're in a place where you're probably, you know, you are, you're, you're a coach now, you're, you're leading other people. And that's the beauty of going through those sort of experiences. That's why you're good at what you do. It's because you can relate to your client and you see the value. And like you said, it's self-worth and not being selfish. That it, that humbling feeling is way more powerful than distracting yourself for an hour, two, three a day on, on the computer watching porn. Um, Roman, thank you so much for taking the time out to speak to us. I know it's late over there and um, it's Saturday night over there. So uh, thank you. And um, I'll put all your information down on the link below so people can find access to you if they need to. So I really appreciate your time. I, I, I appreciate our conversation. It was, it was excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, you've been listening to the Secret Men's Business Podcast. Now, all the information about today's podcast will be down below. Now, don't forget, podcasts are released on Mondays, and we have retro podcasts on Thursdays, both at 9 a.m. Don't forget to subscribe and like and follow us so you know when the next podcast is out. Okay, guys, have a great week, and we'll see you next time. This is Joey Buzzitall. See you later. Bye. Mm-hmm.